Welcome, everybody. Hey, hey. <laughs> Good boy, Tucker. Work smarter where you want. This is learning at its most fun. Welcome to another Takeover Tuesday event. The second Tuesday of the month, we have an industry expert take over our platform so we can discuss strategy. So it's definitely the best Tuesday of the month and we're glad you're here. On this fine Tuesday in March, we have Jen Goldman. Jen brings 30 years of experience transforming service businesses to thrive for generations. She has plenty of proven transformation methods, and she's been published in Inc. Magazine's Tech Tools for Today's High Margin Practice, Liberated CEO, and Trade Publications, and as well as workshops and speaking spots at several national conferences. So really happy to have her here. She's a longtime friend of our company, and she really has a highly sought after service. I would say personally, when working with offices and just being in Redtail's internal chat, at least weekly, we have someone in our internal chat, we use Slack. Someone in our Slack is asking for consultants on behalf of a user that they're speaking to. And Jen is always a top recommendation. So I'm sure she's busy. So. I, because she's so busy, I'm very thankful that she's joining us today. So we have a great presentation on organization today. And with no further ado, I give you Jen for her presentation. Thank you, Nora. I'm so happy to be here. And you're right, it is kind of crazy times. So we're, as I said to Nora, we're gonna go through this content and I will let you know that at the end, I will give you a link to download a Cliff Notes version of what I'm covering. It's one page. It's meant for people like me that have a short attention span and need the data recap. So you can relax, grab some water, grab whatever you need. Maybe it's lunch. This is a good time to just take a break, soak in some ideas. And I'm going to give you five with the hope that you take home one idea back to the business. Okay. So again, I'm going to cover five ideas with the hope that you take back one to the business. And if you want the cliff notes, I will give you a link at the end where you can go ahead and get them. All right, so let's get started. So we're going to skip right past this slide. There's nothing on it and get right to everything I'm about to talk about impacts all these areas of the business. So for any of you that are owners or operators of the business and you look at all parts of the business, you understand when you make a change in one of these columns, it has a trickle effect on other columns. So just so you know, these techniques are not slotted for one area of the business, but to impact the whole business. Okay. Oh, and I'll for you, you know what? I'm gonna just chat my LinkedIn because I've learned you guys look me up while you're going through webinars. And I want you, if you can, to focus on this information. So I'm going to send you my LI, get done with it. Click it, please connect, do whatever you got to do, but let's get back to this session because what I find when I end is everybody's connecting in the middle of the session. So just go ahead and take care of that. So let's talk about number one. I talk about this at nauseum. I've written blog posts about it um, because I struggle with it. I'm a business owner and an operator and time and energy management is a huge, huge issue. We are givers in our industry. And, you know, it's our, it's our DNA. But by giving, we don't protect our time and thus we don't protect our energy. So I'm gonna give you a technique on that, okay? The second is number crunching. Very untechnical term for financial projections on the business, not the clients, on the business. Maybe a technique for that that brings a lot of clarity. Third, collaborative strategic planning. We're all trying to do things ourselves, but nowadays we have this amazing way to collaborate and to help each other, whether it's working on the business, it's having a staff meeting, it's having a client meeting or working with the client. Collaboration is key. It's a theme. We should rely on it because it helps us all. 
Okay. Fourth, talent development. We know what that means, but I'm going to give you a technique so the work doesn't fall on you if you're the owner or the operator of the business, but it falls on everyone to develop each other and to rise up. And the fifth is client experience clarity. So we always used to talk about the client segmentation. I'm going to give you a technique about getting, you know, this idea around the experience of the client, which also helps figure out the staff experience. So a lot to cover. I'm going to give you the cliff notes. Okay, let's talk about time and energy. So for anybody in the crowd, and we're not going to do polls like we normally do today, but for anybody who uses a calendar management system or a calendar blocking system, right? You understand part of the equation, which is to protect your time. For, but here's the other trick. <laughs> there's the protection of the time, but then there's the use of your energy. So I'll use myself as an example. Mornings, I'm really crystal clear and that's when I can do really technical work. Afternoons, get a little fuzzy. <laughs> My energy in the morning is high and very clear. And that's when I should be doing that type of work. So I translate that into the time blocking system and the appointment scheduling system. I may not do calls in the morning because that's when I wanna do technical work. When I wanna do the people work, the things that energize me, when I'm low on energy, I might choose to do that in the afternoon. So the exercise of, I call it energy charting, not technical again, think about when is a good time during the day to do the different work on or in the business? And then match that with your appointment scheduling system. So it maximizes your energy throughout the day versus draining it. Okay, number crunching. So this looks like a lot of information. So let me try to simplify this. We all, I'm gonna talk about owners for a moment here. <laughs> have dreams, have dreams of big businesses, scalable businesses, and that's great. There's nothing wrong with having a dream, but we have to bring it to reality. We have to be honest about saying, I want this bigger business and quantifying that. So we know the impact on our people, our day and our business development. So what I'm showing here is three different models, but I'm gonna be honest with you, as I joked with Nora, I am not my own financial planner anymore, okay? I'm getting worse on the numbers. You guys are great on numbers. You're great in Excel. Let's go really simple and say, what do we think the business looks like five years from now? Revenue, number of clients. And then work back to today and see what the numbers tell you. For example, often I hear businesses say, I wanna be a billion. I want to be 5 billion assets under management, or I want to be 10 million of gross running revenue. And I say, that's great. Okay, you're at 2 million today. You want to be at 10 in five years. Let me tell you how many clients you have to bring in to get there. And that's when the sweat <laughs> starts happening. That's when the clarity starts happening. Okay, it is just like a financial plan. Look to the future, look at today, map out how you're going to get there and then start making decisions about the business and where you really wanna grow, okay? All right, this is the fun part. So I'm gonna spend a little time on this because I mentioned this in you know, the introduction to this, this uh, webinar. Collaboration and strategic planning. I am still finding today that so many businesses are doing staff meetings where they're not collaborating on the agenda where they're working with the client, but it's like they're doing everything for the client and they're not necessarily collaborating with the client. Okay. When they're doing strategic business planning, they're kind of working, I'm not gonna say in silos, but a little bit in a lonely place where they're not kind of throwing ideas against the wall at real time and letting somebody else react to them and then add on them. Collaboration accelerates clarity, growth, it lowers workload. It does so many things on so many fronts. So one of the really important takeaways, if you had to take one thing away today, would be about maximizing collaboration tools. So unfortunately, the silver lining of COVID has been that almost everyone is leaning more on their tools, whether it's 365 Microsoft or it's Google or 
some other tool. We've got the Trellos, the Asanas, the ClickUps, goes on and on, Basecamp. Those are all collaboration tools. They all allow you to throw ideas up, put them into little pockets, okay? For me, the example I'm giving here is top goals, developing talent, freeing up time, earning more business, having a higher profitability. You can create the sections the way you want in these tools and then throw every idea there. Now, for some of you that are employees and you have a visionary owner whose brain does not shut down, <laughs> this is by far the best tool you can possibly use because what you do is you put it on their mobile device and you tell them every time you have an idea, please don't email me, please put it in this system. And then when you put it in the system, I want you to write out the benefit of this idea. How is it going to help us, our culture, our growth, our pro whatever it is, what is the benefit? That stops most visionaries in their tracks because they have great visions, but they don't identify the benefits. So collaboration. I'm sorry, what tool is this right now we're looking at? Um, this is, happens to be Asana. Oh, okay. But Microsoft 365 has started to copy them. So Microsoft mm -hmm. has Planner, and I don't believe Google has anything because they integrate. Yeah. So, and, and the nice thing about all of these is you can move things up and down. You can reprioritize. You can put dates on them because, okay, visionaries, wonderful ideas, but you just can't get it all done overnight. Yeah. So it doesn't play around, right? Yeah, it does look really visual. And I assume other people have access to this so they can add their thoughts to it as well yep. and collaborate. Awesome. Yep. And it keeps track, okay. kind of like the history in Red Tail. So the idea is if somebody goes in and makes a minor change to something you put in, it doesn't necessarily wipe out what you have. There's a log which mm -hmm. is great. You can see the evolution of ideas all together. Mm -hmm. yep. So this is huge. This actually can also be used for agendas. And I wouldn't say use this with clients. I'm going to tell you flat out, do not. I no, no SEC compliance around this. But in terms of internally for strategic planning and business meetings, this is where you want to sit. And I'm going to, if it's okay with you, Nora, I'm going to look at the chat and if there's questions, maybe answer them on the fly. Is that? Yeah, exactly. Because I know someone is asking about the name of the program again. I want to say it's A-S-A-N-A. -A. Yep. Let me write oh, it in. Perfect. There you guys go. Yep. And by the way, I make absolutely not a dime from any software <laughs> I mentioned. As Nora knows, I'm full disclosure. Um, yes. Everything I mention um, is all on your own, did your own vetting. But mm -hmm. yeah, yep. So, yep. So let me move into one more aspect of this type of system. Yes, Airtable's good. Monday's good. I, again, the, the fact is, here's the takeaway. Don't worry about if you picked the right system. Pick the best system that is easy to learn, easy to use, and speaks visually to you people on your team. That's the most important thing. Don't, the complex tools don't get used, right? And so you wanna pick something simple that everybody adopts and gets used to doing because collaboration is hard for people that have quiet voices and are not used to speaking up, that's, uh, it makes them nervous. So the last thing you wanna do is give them a tool that looks complex on top of making them nervous about speaking up, okay? So great thing. And yes, you can drill down for details, but I can't because I'm on a PowerPoint deck. <laughs> so. All right, so that's a very big technique. And I spent a little more time on that again because I think it's hugely important. All right, let's talk about talent development. Now, again, I'm a Cliff Notes version kind of girl, meaning you can do beautiful org charts. No doubt I do that for businesses, but I first keep things simple. So again, this concept of thinking about who's a decision maker all the way down to who's the admin on the client facing part of the business. And then separately on the business operations, again, who's a decision maker down to who's associate. You can tell by my grids that they're very simple, okay? And I know you guys are all smart, you're probably taking screenshots, go right ahead. Um, then you think about career paths, but here's the play. The right side of the slide is by far the most important. Okay. 
we are so used to job descriptions in our lives. That is old news. We've got to get real about people's personal goals and how they intersect with what happens with them at work. We have to also understand we all wear more than one hat at work. I don't care how big of a business I've worked with, I've never met a person that wears only one hat. And I call them roles. So in this document that you're looking at, I get staff to fill out all the roles, not their title as much as all the roles. Who's their manager versus who's their mentor? All of us need mentors in life. It could be a parent, it could be a friend, it doesn't have to be in the business. We all have to think about our career paths, including the owners. This is a big one. I get owners, I don't have a career path, this is it. I'm like, okay, so what is your transition path? I don't care what you call it, we all have a path, all right? And then personal goals and then quarterly work goals. And this is what brings clarity to the career pathing. It's no longer the age where you say, as an owner, I'm gonna decide that for you. You have to get their feedback. Is that what you want? More often than not, somebody who has been slotted to become maybe a potential owner has no interest in, in owning a business or running it. Maybe somebody who's been slotted to be a professional wants to be the back, you know, run the business behind the scenes. So we can't assume, we have to be open, we have to collaborate again. So this is how you do it. You add roles, you add personal goals, you add professional quarterly goals and the career path section to the job description and let each staff person fill it out. And then whoever the manager is, sit down and refine it, work on it together. The clarity that this will bring, the empowerment, it is amazing. And it takes a load off because I can tell you most owners, the one thing they find most difficult is managing and empowering their people. So this technique allows you to do it without a lot of work. Okay, so big technique there. Okay, last technique, and then I'm gonna give you some um, techniques to lower fatigue, because I also know even going through this webinar and all this content, we get tired. So the last technique is client service clarity. And I tackle this a little bit differently than other providers. Not wrong, not right, just different. I not only think about what are the different client segments, what do they look like, but who is servicing them? What services are you providing reactively and proactively? Are you at their beck and call or do you kind of stick to office hours and the kind of revenue that's generated from these clients? So this really isn't just client segmentation. We could call this client segmentation on steroids. This discusses staffing, profitability, processes and standards. You start with this top-down approach, again, in a very simple grid, you are gonna get clarity or realize you don't have clarity. And lack of clarity, we all know this, we can't service properly then. We're being all to everyone and that creates an unsustainable business. Okay. Yes, Mosh, you will get these slides at the end. I'll give you a link and you can download a Cliff Notes version. I'm not gonna give you the slides, I'm gonna give you one pager. I think that's is great too, because we always say in Red Tail when, you know, you're creating note categories or activity categories to say whether it's an incoming phone call or outgoing phone call. And we say it as a joke, but it really, if you're having somebody call in a hundred times a year versus maybe you calling them, even leaving voicemails, you know, 10 times a month, you have to kind of reassess, okay, am I getting value out of this? Do I need to up my charge for them? you can kind of assess, okay, we're spending a lot of man hours just taking their phone calls or having to do, the, look over their taxes or whatever extra service that they're looking for. And this can really, you know, assess your value to them or right. to, to your, what your bottom line is that they're bringing. That's right. I mean, I'm sure you're seeing this and I see this Back in the day, I used to get really in trouble for saying, maybe you should time track for a couple months and understand, and that's a bottom-up approach, and nobody liked it. <laughs> so you're, you're totally right. And this is a little more tactful way, especially for staff to approach owners and say, we, we can't do this. Like, how do you present that and not sound like you don't want to work hard and have a work ethic? 
So I feel like psychologically, this is like a compromise. It's top down, but it sends a message of this is unsustainable, especially if you have like 10 different client segments. Can you imagine? Yes, exactly. Because I think by the time you realize it, everyone's burnt out already, right? And then it's like, how do you get your stuff out of that burnout? That's right. And having a structure in place like this will kind of tiptoe, kind of at least acknowledge that it's happening. You're heading down that burnout road. That's right. Yeah, I guess it, it, they would say what's well, one half is awareness, then the other half is to solve it, but at least you're aware. And then maybe you take, you know, a quarterly meeting with the team and say, let's, you know, chip away at this and, and make it better for next year. Again, as they say, yeah. Rome wasn't built in a day, but <laughs> was built. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so change fatigue. So with all of this, I do understand that these are a lot of ideas. And at the beginning, I said, taking home one to the business is enough, all right? This is a lot. Um, you take them all or you're doing them all, congratulations. You're a rock star. Um, let's talk a little bit about the fatigue because if you do any of these techniques, it will identify issues to change. And then you have change fatigue to deal with. And this is where firms get in trouble. They start initiatives and then they stop halfway through. And then they don't start other ones because they remember that it wasn't, it didn't feel good. So I'm going to give you a couple different change fatigue reduction techniques to go along with the five ideas. Okay, productive meeting technique. I alluded to it earlier, all right? Um, make it collaborative. How do you make a collaborative? I'm going to use Redtail as the example. You can use an activity template with a set outline in the activity template. And for staff meetings, that is the activity that you use. And that outline allows and add it to everybody's calendar. So as all you know, when you add an activity template, everybody's listed if it's a staff meeting. Okay. That means before the meeting, everybody goes in and updates it. So you have set, you know, that outline and they go in and they put their notes under the section and they put their initials. So by the time you get to your staff meeting, the agenda is completely filled out with information. And because of initials, people know who is going to be speaking. So talk about taking a meeting from reactive and what are we talking about looks to proactive. This is a great way to do it. And Redtail is a tool to allow you to use the activity template. All right. Um, at the bottom, it's smaller print, but I probably should have made it bigger. Um, really important. I take this for granted. Running a collaborative meeting is not easy to facilitate. The person that's running it usually should not be the person that's annotating the notes of the meeting. Um, I take it for granted that I can literally do a call with multiple parties, run the meeting, and take notes at the same time. But I realize, give yourselves a break. So pick one person to annotate and the other person to run the meeting and you'll find it to be much easier, okay? And you will have hiccups, so just give yourself a break. Okay, second. So this is a mantra that I've been using for years and I finally was able to articulate it some years ago. And I use it anytime I think about a part of the business. Doesn't matter whether it's accounting or it's the new client onboarding experience. I'm always looking for ways to IDOs. The reason this lowers fatigue is when you memorize a mantra, it becomes natural. You don't have to think about it. So I suggest when you are working on the business or looking at something, you apply a mantra. You can choose whatever you want. You wanna choose Kramer's Serenity Now. You wanna use mine. Whatever it gets for you to breathe for a moment in that moment of something you're working on and find a way to make it better. Because if you find a way to make it better, you get these little kenzens, these little changes that amount to a lot of extra time in your day and a better work experience. So for those of you that meditate or do others, again, it's the idea of using a mantra in work, find a mantra that gets you to breathe in the moment and see a way to make what you're doing easier and better the next time, and then just do it. read and share. Back to book club. Now, I know most of you have probably listened to podcasts and may not read paper. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I find that 
when we get back to the offices, if that even happens, I have a lot of firms that are gonna stay remote permanently, but book club can happen on Zoom. And the reason for suggesting book club as a fatigue reducer is it's another technique for breathing, sharing, and improving without the stress, okay? It kind of like wipes away the stress when you read something and you share with the rest of the team one takeaway. Because then what you're doing is you're buying into an improvement together and you don't have the fatigue of trying to convince one person at a time, hey, this is an idea that we should adopt. It's kind of like helping each other get a different type of mindset to be open to ideas and to collaborate. It's much easier and less energy sucking when you do it this way. So I gave some examples here. There's lots of good books out there, all right? But I always say once a quarter, pick a book and then have one person come back and kind of recap some lessons and takeaways. So yes, have book club. Okay, and then the most important, and this is the one we always forget. We forget to celebrate every little win. I forget this all the time, even though I speak about it, okay? Especially for working remotely, we have to give congrats. It could be the smallest thing. Somebody built out, you know, an easier way to run a staff meeting. Somebody built out a way to cut out a couple steps inside of uh, onboarding a new client. That's a huge win, right? It doesn't matter. You've got to find a way to celebrate these. The staff meeting is actually really great. Ideally, on the activity template I mentioned, at the end, put celebrate wins and let each person write down what they achieved. So let them, let them actually contribute to say, this is what happened in the past week or the past month. We've got to do that. Okay, that gives us the energy boost that we need. Okay. I'm gonna summarize and I see a couple Q and A's. So maybe should we leave those to the end, Nora, before my summary or after, what do you think? Uh, yeah, we can go through them after the summary. Great. And I promised I would end early because I know that everybody is stretched for time. Okay, so here's the tricks. You've got goal projections. I called it number crunching. You have time and energy. You have talent development and client clarity, All right? And these will all be on that cliff notes that I give you. And then you have fatigue reduction techniques. You have the planning, which I talked about as a trick. It also reduces fatigue. That collaboration tool, both maybe activity template on staff meetings and then also like a tool like an Asana. Productive meetings. Nobody should come into a meeting without an agenda and items to talk about, right? Book club, new ideas in a way that is not energy sucking, but actually adds and boosts energy, right? Having a mantra that becomes a habit to look for ways to improve what you're doing, how you're doing it. And then to celebrate the Kenzens, the little baby step improvements, either in a staff meeting or in a summer way. Thanks so much for joining us today for this particular session. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call at 800-206-5030, option three for support, or just shoot us an email over to support at redtailtechnology.com. Thanks a lot and have a great day.